Yes, my shirt is wrinkly. And yes, you're going to have to deal with it. Ooh, we've got one that's been highly requested in a lot of the comments of my videos lately, the Sunto 9 Peak against the brand new Polar Grit X Pro. Which one comes out on top? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chase to Summit, and today we're going to be taking a close look at these two watches, the Sunto 9 Peak and the Polar Grit X Pro. The Grit X Pro that we'll be looking at today in this video is actually the Grit X Pro Titan because that's the one that's closer in price to the Sunto 9 Peak. And a lot of people have requested this video because the pricing between these two options is so similar and the target demographic that we're looking at between these two watches is also very similar as well. And I'll spoil this video a little bit in advance. Both of these options are really great. The Grit X Pro is a great watch and so is the Sunto 9 Peak, but they're right for different people. They've got strengths and weaknesses in different departments. Neither one is perfect, but before we get into the good stuff, I do have to let you know about today's sponsor, and that is my friends over at Playbetter.com. Playbetter.com is a USA authorized retailer for Polar watches and Garmin's and Sunto watches and Koros watches, all the major brands, and there's no funny business. They sell actual products direct from manufacturer. They're based in the USA in Maryland, and they're real people that will hand pack your orders and get them out to you with free two-day shipping and a no-hassle free 60-day return policy. So if you change your mind, Two months later, you can get your money back, which is awesome. So if you're interested in picking up any GPS watch, it doesn't have to be one of these two, anything from Garmin to Koros to Sunto or Polar, check out the links down description down below because they do help support the channel and Play Better is a pretty awesome place to shop. Some background on me and my perspective when I test out these watches is I'm an ultra marathon runner, I'm a trail runner, I'm a hiker, I'm someone who enjoys outdoorsy stuff in the mountains, camping, hiking, that kind of thing, but I'm not so much a cyclist or a triathlete or a swimmer, so I won't be covering any of those topics in this video. I'll be mainly taking a look at the wellness tracking and those kinds of features on these watches along with smartwatch features and finally we'll be taking a look at activity tracking and what kind of accuracy you can get out of these watches in terms of GPS accuracy and the wrist-based optical heart rate sensor. And with that let's jump into the first topic and that's going to be hardware design and build quality. You can see here I've got the Sunto 9 Peak on the left here. This is the black steel version but it also comes in a titanium version. The black steel version I have here comes in at $500 $69 and the titanium version comes in at $699. So we're gonna ignore that one completely because it doesn't really match up in pricing with the Polar Grit X Pro. Aside from the build materials of the two versions of the Sunto 9 Peak, it's the exact same watch. The titanium version just has a titanium casing and it's also just a little bit lighter. Now when it comes to the Polar Grit X Pro that I have here, this is actually the more expensive version of the Grit X Pro. This is the Grit X Pro Titan model, which is actually made out of titanium. Now the Grit X Pro Titan comes in at $599, which makes it just $30 more than the Sunto 9 Peak steel version. But if you did want to save a couple of bucks on the Grit X Pro, you can opt for the steel version of this watch, which comes in at just $499, making it just about $70 cheaper than the Sunto 9 Peak. Oh yeah, by the way, all that pricing is based in US dollars, and I don't know what that converts to where you are in the world. Uh, that's all I know here. And just judging a book by the cover here, taking a look at these two watches from a high level, you can kind of tell they're both designed for the same type of person and that's kind of an outdoorsy person looking for a ruggedly built watch. One thing is apparent when you're comparing these two watches side by side, and that's gonna be the size and weight of the watch. The Polar Grit X Pro on the right here comes in at a 47 millimeter diameter, and it's about 13 millimeters thick, where the Sunto 9 Peak here comes in at just 43 millimeters in diameter and just about 11 millimeters thick. That makes the Sunto 9 Peak quite a bit smaller than the Grit X Pro in just about every dimension. On top of the size difference between these two watches, there's also a different in weight. When it comes to the Sunto 9 Peak, the steel version is actually 63 grams, but you can save some weight if you go for that titanium version down to 52 grams. And when it comes to the Polar Grit X Pro, the steel version is 79 grams, and the titanium version here is 73 grams. So again, you save a little bit of weight with the titanium version. When it comes to the bands included with each watch on the Polar Grit X Pro, it comes with a leather band in the box, which I don't particularly like. I actually like using rubber bands for sport applications. Uh, and and then it also comes with this FKM band, which is like a fluoroelastimeter. I probably said that wrong. And it's supposed to be more heat and chemical resistance. I also find it to be quite comfortable. I really like this band. And on the Sunto 9 Peak, you've got a pretty similar feeling uh, silicone strap. It's a really 
plush rubber. It's really soft and stretchy. And I like this band as well. I also like that they added a bunch of holes in it to allow it to breathe and dry out a little bit quicker than having just a solid rubber, rubber band like on the Polar Grid X Pro. The good news here is that both the Polar Grid X Pro on the right and the Sunto 9 Peak on the left here both have a quick release band. So you can actually pop these off with your fingernail by pushing the pin inside here. And I could actually swap these bands between each other because they use the same type of attachment point. And of course, you could buy a bunch of different types of these bands on Amazon or direct from the manufacturers. There's a lot of options out there. When it comes to the design of each watch, you can see that they took a pretty different approach with how you interact with them. The Sunto 9 Peak here actually has a touch screen, but it also has three buttons on the right here. And I find these buttons to be really satisfying. They're very clicky buttons. You can actually kind of hear them when you press them. That probably sounds louder than it actually is. The Grit X Pro also has a touch screen on the front here, but it also has five buttons instead of the three located on the Sunto 9 Peak. Let's talk about general build quality between these two watches, how robust they are. They're both extremely well built, some of the best on the market. The Sunto 9 Peak has a sapphire lens, which is extremely scratch resistant, and the case is almost all metal. This one's the steel version again, but that metal goes all the way around to the back of the watch, where there is a small patch of plastic where it actually sits on your wrist, so it's not really that big of a deal because it's really never exposed to the elements, but most of it is metal, which I really like. And for some reason, the Sunto 9 Peak just has some heft to it. It just feels really nice in the hand. It feels like a premium device, and I really like how it's built. The Grid X Pro, on the the other hand is extremely well built as well. It again does have a sapphire lens and that's available on both the steel version and the titanium version I have here. Uh, the back is made out of plastic but it doesn't feel cheap or chintzy at all and I feel like this would be a very difficult watch to actually break or damage. So they're both really doing a nice job here and both do have metal buttons as well. And when it comes to waterproofing of course both of them are waterproof. You can go shower with them, swim with them and they're both good for about 100 meters in depth which is great. They're not specifically designed for diving, but if you want to do open water swimming or dive in the pool, shouldn't be a big deal with these watches. Moving on, let's talk about the display between these two watches because they're pretty similar. Actually, the display size is the same between the Sunto 9 Peak and the Polar Grit X Pro, despite the outside diameter of the watch being much bigger on the Polar Grit X Pro. Both these watches feature a 1.2 inch transflective display that's great in direct sunlight, and they both also offer a backlight, which is actually pretty good on both watches. Keep in mind, these aren't OLED watches. They're not gonna look like an Apple watch or anything like that. These are designed for function over being pretty. The nice thing about both these watches is that in the settings, there's actually a setting to toggle the brightness of the backlight. You can pick high, medium, or low on each one. And I like to set them to high because it looks the best, but it does take a hit on the battery. The Sunto 9 Peak also has the advantage of having an ambient light sensor on board. So it can actually adjust the backlight in real time de depending on the situation that you're in. Both of these displays are perfectly functional but they're not super vibrant. I think if I had to pick a winner between these two in terms of backlight brightness, I'd probably go with the Sunto 9 Peak. Uh, but if I had to pick a winner when it comes to like general readability, I actually prefer the Polar Grit X Pro. I don't know what it is about the Sapphire on the Grit X Pro, but it seems to be a little less reflective than what's on the Sunto 9 Peak. Like at different angles, I feel like I can read it just a little bit easier, but that might just be me. I'm, I'm not really sure. One thing I do find a little bit annoying on both of these watches is that since they both have the same size display and since they're both kind of big watches, there is still a pretty thick bezel around the perimeter of the watch on both of them. Obviously this bezel is worse on the Polar Grit X because it's got the 47 millimeter diameter with that 1.2 inch screen. Uh, but the bezel on the Sunto 9 Peak is not thin at all. I feel like now that it's 2021, we should have progressed past the thick bezel phase, but we're still here. So seems like it's here to stay. When it comes to the actual user interface and the software within the watch, they both take a pretty different approach. On the Sunto 9 Peak, you've obviously got your watch face here, which gives you a variety of information like your sunset and sunrise. And this watch face is customizable within the settings of the watch. Clicking the middle button on the right here will bring you actually into your music controls. And these controls will actually control the music on your phone. This watch does not have internal storage for music playback, but it can control your phone. You can skip tracks, you can play and pause, and you can adjust the volume from your watch so you don't have to get your phone out of your backpack. Now we go back to our watch face. You can scroll up if you wanna go into your exercise menu where you can start and stop, stop an activity. Now, if we go back to the watch face and scroll down instead of up, you get different options to choose from. Here's where you've got your widget for your heart rate to show your real-time heart rate currently, even though I'm not wearing the watch right now. And it also shows your blood oxygen saturation level because this watch does have a blood oxygen saturation sensor on the back of the watch. 
watch. Scrolling down again shows your active time for the week and also your body resources, which is kind of a uh, energy level for how much energy you have left in your day. And you can see right now I'm at 18% in body resources and that's because we've got a new baby in the house. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. Now, if we scroll down again, you've got more basic wellness data like your steps, calories burned. You've also got uh, training time for the week and your weekly goal. And then you've got data like your current altitude and temperature. You've got your sleep for the previous night. And finally, we've got my current fitness level according to the first beast analytics within the app. And I'll show you that in a little bit. And that's the student town nine peak. Again, it's just a quick overview of the user interface. We're not doing a deep dive here. If you want to see a deep dive, check out the dedicated review I have about the soon to nine peak up here or over here rather. Now let's take a look at the Polar Grit X Pro and they take a different approach when it comes to the user interface and how you see your data. Basically, you've got a series of watch faces that you can scroll through uh, and these watch faces give you different information. Here you can see we've just got the time and date, but if I scroll over, now we've got my activity percentage for the week. We've got my current training load, which is nice to see. We've also got my current heart rate here. We've got my last training session. We've got my nightly recharge from last night, which says poor, which lines up with what I saw on the Sunto, which is always good. And then we've got my FitSpark recommended workouts. This is a widget that will actually give you an idea of what you should do next when it comes to working out. And these workouts will actually supplement anything you've done previously. So actually take data from your previous workouts and sleep and all of that information. It'll grind that up and it'll spit out a workout that you should do to supplement all of that. So because I've been running a lot, it tells me to do a supportive workout. And today should be a core regular workout for 20 minutes with five exercises. And if you scroll down, it'll actually show you each of the exercises and how long it'll take, which is really nice. Next up, we've actually got a weather widget widget on the Polar Grit X Pro, which I really like, and I wish this was on the Sunto 9 Peak. I like to be able to check my weather from my wrist without getting my phone out. And you can see diving into the weather widget, there's a ton of information here, including the wind speed and humidity and precipitation and even upcoming hour by hour forecast and day by day forecast. Next up, we've got the weekly summary watch face, and this is really cool. Basically, if you dive into this, you can see your weekly summary, how much time you've spent working out, how many calories you've burned working out, your heart rate zones for the week that you spent the most time in and even distance for the week, which I really like. I really like this widget because I tend to go on a week by week goal basis. So having all of this information on one screen is just really nice and handy to have. Next up, we've got the music control widget. And again, this widget allows you to control the music on your phone from your watch. So you don't have to dig your phone out of your backpack. Next up, we've got the outdoor widget that launched on the Polar Grid X Pro. So it's brand new. This gives you a bunch of information for orienteering or navigating. You can see right on the homepage here, we've got our current altitude and a full-blown compass around the perimeter of the watch. And if we dive into this widget even further, we get our altitude for the past six hours. Another new widget on the Polar Grit X Pro is this sunrise sunset widget. And again, this gives you a ton of information about the sunrise and sunset. You can dive into it. You can see how much time is left in the day. And that's just a quick overview of the user interface and smartwatch features on board the Polar Grit X Pro. Again, I didn't dive too deep on this. If you want to see all the nitty gritty details about this watch, check out the full review that I posted up here a little while ago. And when it comes to smartwatch features, both watches do have the ability to pair with your phone and display notifications that pop up from text messages or Facebook messages, calendar events, anything like that will show up on both of these watches. So just from that quick overview, you can tell that there's a few things missing on each watch. For instance, the Sunto 9 Peak has the heart rate sensor with an SpO2 sensor built in, where the Polar Grid X Pro only has the heart rate sensor with no SpO2 sensor. The Sunto 9 Peak also has a temperature sensor to pick up the ambient temperature around you where the Polar Grid X Pro doesn't have a temperature sensor. But the Polar Grid X Pro does have that really nice weather widget. It also has the recommended workout widget. So there's, you know, pros and cons to both here. Okay, let's talk about actually tracking an activity going out for a run with the Sunto 9 Peak or the Grid X Pro. Both of these watches actually have a ton of activity profiles to choose from. The Grid X Pro has something like 130 activity profiles, anything from badminton to soccer to football to running to treadmill running, indoor and outdoor. There's a lot to choose from there. The Sunto 9 Peak also has quite a few activity profiles to choose from. Not quite as many as the Grid X Pro, but there are a lot there. And 
I think all of the bases are covered. Also, both watches do have a multi-sport or triathlon mode, so you can choose that as well. When you're actually in an activity, you can see here I've got both watches in the running activity. You've got a plethora of information to choose from here, and all of this information is fully customizable within the apps to both of these watches on your smartphone. And on the topic of external sensors, both watches are compatible with external heart rate sensors. However, they're only compatible with Bluetooth sensors, not AMP Plus, and that goes for both of these. Now let's talk about navigation features between the Suunto 9 Peak and the Polar Grit X Pro because they're pretty different. The Grit X Pro is compatible with Komoot navigation and also Strava to import routes that are pre-designed. This is breadcrumb navigation. It's not a full-blown map. So basically you see a little squiggly line, there's an arrow along that line, and that basically tells you where to go. Now, if you veer off course too far, the watch will alert you, it'll buzz, it'll vibrate, and it'll let you know that you're off course. The breadcrumb navigation on the Polar Grit X Pro is actually pretty good, gives you a good idea of where you are, and you can actually zoom in and out on the course to see where you are in the big picture. There are some limitations when it comes to the navigation features. Like I said, it can't pan around on the map, which is something I would like to see, and there's no waypoint or point of interest support, so you can't put in like a location for water or camping or aid station or anything like that. It's just basic breadcrumb navigation. That said, it does work really well and there is a proper back to start function which allows you to hit back to start when you're out in the woods and you're lost and it'll actually navigate you back to the beginning of your activity by retracing your steps, which is great. So the Suunto 9 Peak again has the ability to navigate a breadcrumb course and again, it's not a full blown map. It's basically just a breadcrumb view, a little squiggly line, an arrow telling you where you need to be. And it's very similar to the Grit X Pro in that way. However, the the Suunto 9 Peak does have one major advantage, and it's that it does have a proper course designer built into the Suunto app. The course designer that comes along with the Suunto 9 Peak is built into the iOS or Android app, and basically you can just pick points along a route. It'll actually route for you throughout the map. It could be on trails or roads, and it'll allow you to add waypoints along that route. So you can actually see those on the watch when you're out navigating that route. I really like this course builder. It's really powerful. It, the map is really good and the routing seems to be really effective. Uh, so it's a really nice feature to have. And it's something that the Polar Grit X Pro does not have. You have to rely on Strava or Komoot to build your course for this watch. Another topic when it comes to accuracy is going to be GPS accuracy. Between these two watches, I've taken them out on several runs over the past couple of weeks, and I gotta say, they're both pretty good. I don't see any major flaws between the GPS accuracy on the Suunto 9 Peak or the Polar Grit X Pro. Neither one is absolutely perfect, like they're not quite as good as what I've seen from the Garmin Foreigner 945 LTE or the new Coros Vertix 2. Those are two, two of the best that I've tested so far, but when it comes to general GPS accuracy, I think these are both doing a pretty good job, and when I compare them side by side in terms of distance at the end of my run, they're nearly identical, within one tenth or two tenths of a mile after a 10 mile run, which is really good. And to be honest, if I wasn't actively comparing these two watches to other watches side by side over several days, I wouldn't be complaining about them at all. They both do a pretty solid job. Another topic of accuracy is going to be heart rate accuracy from the optical heart rate sensors on the back of both of these watches. Again, I've taken these watches out on several runs to compare them side by side, and I've also worn the Polar H9 ECG chest-based heart rate sensor, which has proven to be really accurate, so I use that as a baseline of comparison. In this one, I found kind of odd. In some situations, I found the Polar Grit X Pro to be extremely accurate, dead on with the Polar H9, but in others, I did have a couple of issues where I saw the heart rate drop quite a bit or spike quite a bit, uh, kind of intermittently, but it was pretty good overall. These spikes and drops were pretty inconsistent. There'd be a blip, it would go back in line. There'd be a drop, it would go back in line. But generally speaking, the tracks were pretty good, but just with some weird drops and high points along the way. Okay, that brings us to the end of this video where we ask which one's better, which one's right for you? Well, it's pretty subjective. Uh, these are both really good watches, and all I can do here is share my opinion. I think in day-to-day -day use as a general smartwatch, a fitness tracker, a sleep tracker, getting that wellness data, while also having some nice features like a weather widget and things like that, the Polar Grit X Pro is what I prefer to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. However, the Suunto 9 Peak is no slouch either, and it's a joy to wear. It just is missing a few of those features like the weather widget and some of the wellness tracking that we get on the Polar Grit X Pro. I also find that the sleep tracking in the 
the Polar Grid X Pro is just a little bit better and seems to be giving me more digestible data. Where the Sunto 9 Peak does track your sleep tracking and steps and things like that, but doesn't really give you any useful information about what to do with it. And when it comes to actually recording activities and using these as running watches, both do the job pretty well. I think I'll give the navigation edge to the Sunto 9 Peak because it has waypoint support, so you can put in eight stations and things like that, which is really handy. But again, both can do navigation. So there's really kind of a draw there. At the end of the day though, these are both excellent watches and all I can do is share the information that I've learned from wearing both of them to you and let you make your own decision. And that's where I want to hear from you. Drop down in the comments down below and let me know what you think is the right watch for you. Is it the Sunto 9 Peak or the Polar Grit X Pro? Okay, that just about wraps up this video. It was long-winded. This took a lot of work. I hope you found it helpful or enjoyable. And if you did, please go down and hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more videos from me in the future. Also check out the links in the description because those do help support my channel and they cost nothing extra to you. And with that, I am done. Okay, bye.